Welcome to Encounter the Word. We at the Jesuit Institute offer this reflection every Sunday on the Liturgy of the Word, where we try to make sure that our reflection on God's Word helps us live God's Word in our daily lives. And so, let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks that we can gather as a community to reflect upon your word and how your word invites us to respond at this moment in our lives and the life of our community and our society. Help us through our listening to deepen our ability to hear what you want of us so that we might live this word in practical ways in the days that are to come. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Moses rose early in the morning and went up on Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. And Moses made haste to bow his head toward the earth and worshipped. And he said, If now I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, let the Lord I beg you, go in the midst of us, although it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you, O Lord God of our fathers, and to be praised and highly exalted forever. And blessed is your glorious holy name, and to be highly praised and exalted forever. You are to to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, and to be extolled and highly glorified forever. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you upon the throne of your kingdom, and to be extolled and highly exalted forever. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you who sit upon cherubim and look upon the deeps, and to be praised and highly exalted forever. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, and to be sung and glorified forever. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways. Heed my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.
we take a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent the Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. No image can do the Trinity justice. But people talk about the love between the Father and the Son being so great that it overflowed them, and the Holy Spirit was the movement of that love. The Holy Spirit has also been described as the kiss of love the Father bestows on the Son. These images are poetic in nature, trying to encapsulate in a picture or a feeling what volumes of textbooks have tried to explain. Well, I'm not brave enough to try and explain what the Trinity is. But I am going to point out what I think is a, a major aspect of the Trinity. Put differently, what does the Trinity as Trinity teach us? One aspect of the Trinity that stands out most for me is that it's a relationality of love and that it teaches us how to be community. The mutual love of the Trinity led firstly to the creation and then to salvation. The love of the Trinity flowed out and created life. And then, when humanity rejected God and chose sin, that same love caused the second person of the Trinity to become incarnate for us, to teach us how to love and to forgive. The Gospel of this Sunday tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only son for us, that we might have eternal life. Do you notice any words of judgment or condemnation? All I notice are words of love and affirmation. In the same gospel passage, we hear Jesus saying that he did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. I wonder if that's how many people experience us or experience the church. It's been my experience that when we speak or act in judgment or condemnation, we turn people off and turn them away. People who are broken or hurting don't need to hear our simplistic opinions, which are usually based on incomplete information. More than anything else, they need us to simply be with them and to journey with them. It has also been my experience that when we truly love one another, the power of our love frees both them and us to be better than who we are and enables us to make the world a better place through our own loving. Our loving can bring life into the world, biological life of children, and a richer life to the widow and the orphan, the sick, the imprisoned, the lonely and the unloved. It gives life to all. Our love, if it is to be genuine, cannot be an inward turning love that simply looks to satisfy our own needs. True, deep, genuine love flows over into all other aspects of life, just like the Father and the Son mean the movement of the Holy Spirit, the breath of life. And that's why love the deep and genuine love has the power to transform us and the world. In the words of Father Pedro Arupe, the previous general of the Society of Jesus, love makes us men and women of God, men and women for others. Now that's why each year the Jesuit parish of Holy Trinity and Bramfontein hosts a Christmas lunch for the homeless, where we feed over 600 people. And that's why for many years, that same parish has hosted a support group for the LGBTQ community. 
That's why one of our new parish initiatives is a Rachel's Vineyard program that helps to heal and renew hearts that are broken through abortion. Through our relationship with diverse groups of people in our community, through our commitment to journeying with them, we have been given life just as their own vision has been broadened, their own love for God and for others deepened. The Jesuit paleontologist and theologian Teot de Chardin said the following, Someday, after mastering the winds, the waves, the tides, and gravity, we shall harness for God the energies of love. And then, for a second time in the history of the world, humanity will have discovered fire. The Trinity teaches us that we human beings are called to live in relationship with one another, and that through self-giving, through mutual love, we can give life to one another. Let's join in praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, friends. Lord, we give you thanks that we could encounter your word, that we could reflect upon your word. And help us now to deepen our reflections as we try to live out the invitation that you have for each one of us. And in so doing, become your faithful disciples. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to have you reflecting with us again next week.